How's everything down at the soil and water? Good. Yeah? Just finished proposal yeah? season, I guess we'll call it. How many so grants proposals did you get in? Three. Three? Yeah. Oh, good. good. And yeah, no. one was already awarded, so that's good. Yeah. 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 West is coming oh, to yeah. Nice. Oh, good. Great. So I was going to ask you again if you guys would do any planning for restoration. Yeah. Yeah. I will. remember we discussed that. We discussed that. Okay, so now we're getting closer to it. We have to write a plan. Okay. Each property. to close on it the 29th of this month. Once we get all that done, then we'll move on to the plan. Yeah. Um, is this plan? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was the mechanism for this, Tom? It comes under the grant. Like, this came about in 05, it says? Right. Oh, yeah. So just the parcel What was plan. the... Yeah, I mean, we would be a plan. Yeah, I didn't know that it had happened. Does it need, like, an, an inventory? Um, is there any, like, tell you the truth, I don't know. I can't remember. No, this is more on the... I how it was done in sync with... Plan of how we're going to restore the harvesting. Things, you know, what? When did we harvest? Take some that? culverts out. Before that? How we're going to restore those areas. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You know, natural corridors. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, we need... Actually, Steve, I've got two other copies here, so you can keep that one. Okay. I mean, we've put in a... No, I just didn't know if this was an estimate called... Of I mean, we, we were... Grant, but you and I still were part of a Conservation Commission-style forestry yeah. board at this but point in time, were we not? I'm pretty sure. When it wouldn't have been before... I think it probably only would have been a couple of years uh, after the harvest. Yeah. June now, be July. I honestly don't yeah, we meet know how it came into being. I, Second... Wednesday. I remember meeting him and. Because uh, I can come and. But like, who commissioned it? Or if you want to meet Let me it. check with uh, uh, Amy. Uh, she's the one that sort of. Well, in the intro, it describes that type of thing. Let me see what, what yeah. she uh, what she thinks our steps are going to be there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just call my cell phone and. Yep. Let me know. As far as I know, we never took it up. Did as I put a, your cell phone in my phone? Yeah, I believe you've called it before. Me neither. That's why I ask. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I'll check with Amy, and uh, so yeah, it might be that meeting, or it might be um, we have an executive committee meeting. It you might happen in a smaller oh, meeting, behind you, okay. and that's oh. the week before. That's the first Wednesday in July. Yes, okay. probably that's not. No, that's not going to happen, is it? No, so the week after next. First Wednesday of July is. July 1st. I think July 1st is a Wednesday. So it won't be the first Wednesday, no. <coughs> What's today? Today's the 19th. Is it just the agenda? Yeah, no, the first Wednesday is the 4th. Um, the 4th, I meant, right? The 4th, yeah, so it won't be the 4th. Oh, right. I didn't see minutes. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, so. The 11th. I don't know. I'll have to find out what they're going to do okay. there. Yeah, just keep me posted. Yeah. Well, the minutes would have been call me whatever it yeah. Is. Yeah. of May 14th, right? And I'm pretty sure that's when we're supposed to have the yeah. minutes by the... I don't know whether, whether that was in that stack. I don't think it was. Um, what grant? This is MNRCP. Yeah. yeah. The oh. wetland mitigation money. Yeah. yeah. They just released their new pot last yes. week, too. Right. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to apply. We're, we're trying to wrap up. We had two this year. We had mm -hmm. <coughs> one on Walnut Hill, 90 acres, and then we had the the Pepin project, which was uh, evidently we were there, Tom. 70 acres. Mm -hmm. and we, and we got <laughs> both of them awarded this year, so I don't know if we'll. So would you just be removing that road, or would you be replacing no, no. the culverts with something then? Oh, no, I think we'll try to just remove them because okay. we don't want people going in there. Okay. Yeah. 
to remove the, the, the access. The way that this is reading, Tom, the plan was in 05, and this was in 05, so it was previous to the harvest, but after the plan. Mm -hmm. And we were present at the walk, you and I, evidently. I'm just not remembering. <laughs> it, I mean, I remember having a walk after the plan was written before the harvest yeah. with the Conservation Commission right. so that we could all be familiar and then decide upon should we move forward with harvest activity. I just don't remember this report. But I am going to see now, I suppose. Yeah. What time is it? Should we get rolling here? Yeah. It's ten, after. ten past. Okay. Did we get started? Excuse me, Carl. Did everybody get a copy of the agenda, June yes. 19, and minutes, May 14? Yes. Oh, minutes? No. Did you get the minutes, Steve? Yep. I got it. We have no company tonight. Looked like we were threatened with company, but they left. I guess so. We're recording, Bill. Okay, we're going to start the uh, June 19th meeting Brothers of the Act and Enforced and Conservation Committee. Um, roll call. We are missing Wes. And is Mark Hurd still a member? You know, I meant to call him uh, for town meeting, and I, I yeah. didn't. Um, We'll have to check with Mark. We should yeah. check with him and see. Right. I mean, he hasn't attended, so it's too bad, though, because we could have had somebody. Well, if he isn't, then we could get to select him to appoint somebody, right? Right. 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 Okay. All right. You want to do that? Check with Mark? Yeah, I'll give him a call. Okay. Um, okay, approval of minutes from May 14th. Questions? Oh, I move with Sydney. Uh, second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Old business. Um, Hebel Harbor Road. Um, three of us took a ride and walk out there a couple weeks ago, Steve? Yep. A couple, yep. Weeks a couple ago. Tuesdays ago. Uh, Wesley and Steve and I, uh, we drove as far as we could reasonably. And then we went on foot from that point on. Um, the road, since the last time I was out there, certainly has deteriorated quite a bit. Mm. Um, but it's still a road <laughs> of sorts. In name only. Of sorts, yeah. Um, definitely would need some major work if it was ever to become a multi-use trail. Right. The larger concern, I suppose, as far as any of the newer damage, if it pertains to the same conversation, I suppose that it would, is the uh, spur trail, I guess I'll call it, on the town forest, it looked yeah. like, that we found into the brook. So. Because it was right after, it was the Tuesday after Memorial Weekend. We were right. talking about yeah. the uh, trucks that we were hearing right. from the Goddard. Yeah. <coughs> and um, they're just driving right through it. The along a section of the town forest, there's a small brook that feeds southerly, feeds a little river, and it feeds the little river. Mm. And um, it ran probably about 50 feet off of the Hebo Hybo Road. A trail had been broken from the Hebo Hybo Road over to the brook. And then, not just four wheelers, but four wheel drive truck size, or si at least side by side style vehicles, ran down the actual swampy section of the brook for as much as 100 feet, 150 right. feet yeah. for fun. Mm -hmm. And then came back over onto the road and, you know, tore around. And, and the road. The road itself continued to get worse from there on down. 
So we had walked, or excuse me, we had driven down to about even with the upper section of the town forest where it lands on both sides of the road. And uh, one large wet hole was about where we decided to stop. So we walked and continued all the way down to uh, almost to the Acton Lebanon town line, down to at least even and on to Roger. the uh, Roger Ridley Wilbur Jones farm awesome. property where a brook had also been diverted and was now running down the middle of the road for a while. So the, the thought behind the concept and the... And the same um, brook. Same brook, yeah. Same brook again, yeah. Quite a few hundred feet downstream, a thousand feet downstream, whatever it was. But the, the question and concept was that you know, the trail as we were seeing it was not even going to come close to being able to be used for anything at, at the, in the status that it's in. Right. And as that um, damage was so far in, and so much work would need to be taken to make it passable without erosion, more potential erosion, mm -hmm. then we needed to have discussed within this committee exactly whether we thought it would be useful to continue the question of the, uh, the trail plan. And Wes was there, so we can add this, add to that as well. Um, so there was real concern over whether or not it would be responsible to start the process. I, that's my phrase or concept or comment would be. Well, we all came away with that. Is that the road itself is not usable, any more use to it, was going to create, do more harm than good. And it would take way more money, time, and cooperation to fix it than the consensus that we thought that we had. Fair comment? Very fair comment. Oh, yeah. Wesley, you have yeah. something to add to that? Anything you put into the road has have to be undone unless there's mm. some sort of control of the activity that's on it. <laughs> you know. Should we should we think about maybe meeting with our Lebanon uh, brethren uh, and see what their thoughts are? Lebanon did vote at their town meeting to make for the town to take that 300 acre piece and make it a community forest. Right. So they're obviously looking at access in there, but I asked. Uh, John Bozak and their end of the road is in much better condition than our end of the road. Right. right. Well, at least to that point. Right. Yeah. To that point it is. Right. Right. Um, so I think it's a, a little different. Right. I, I do think it's probably safe to say it's been a while since I've been on the southerly Lebanon end of it, mm -hmm. but it would be safe to say that as we know that the trailer traffic that Roger had used to do the last harvesting on that property was as far up as he went to the landing that we saw right. where there was the mattress dump and burn pile and such like that. That that was evidence enough that pr pretty well considered that that was uh, truckable up to that point and the, the area in the middle around the town line was probably the worst section right. between the Acton Town Forest and the Lebanon Town Line. Right. It was the worst stretch for sure. Thinking. So the concept of a through road would be hard to pull off. A big project. Hard, not even just, we're talking, I mean, we were throwing numbers around just what do you have in your head as to what this would take, and it was, you know, five, six digits. Oh, six digits. <laughs> Definitely six digits. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's... Well, the, the only... Uh, group that has any governance on this, in quotes, would be the abutters. Right. Uh, our, our, probably the only uh, role we might play is to have an abutters meeting and try to uh, make our concerns as we... It's too hear. bad because the worst of it, the abutter is the town of Acton. The town right. Of Acton. Yep. <laughs> you know, and then down through Wilbur's property. Uh, Wilbur's yeah. property. I mean, it continues those two properties, you know, definitely um, that's where the road is really damaged. Um, do we know whether uh, 
this heavy duty truck traffic is coming in solely from the accident or is it we don't know I couldn't tell I would can't tell I'm thinking mostly from the Lebanon end but that's only because of the uh, once again it's all completely circumstantial but for example Memorial weekend there was from what I could tell a big like four wheel or four wheel drive side by side style rally yeah. down at the place right across from trains on 202 mm -hmm. well they do like rides and they do rides yeah. right well my impression after driving down there over the Memorial weekend was I was watching a whole mess of like mud traffic come off of that property, go up the Hebo, oh, excuse me, up 202, past trains, toward Middle Road, which would then be a bang of left and just go up there and, you know, just go up there and go straight across from Middle Road and you'll be on some of the best four-wheel drive, you know, cruising in the town of, you know, Acton, Lebanon, Maine. Oh, yeah. In parentheses, the Hebo Hybo Road. You know, I'm thinking it was just like a, right. you know, once you're down here testing out everything, go up there and tear around for a while. Was my impression. Is Middle Road the? Um, uh, is that Deep Depot Road? Road. No, no, I meant the other. I mean, there's another one a little farther up. Oh, I know. There's you. another little road with a. Yeah. Kind of comes up. Comes out on Smith Road, I think. Right. Yeah, towards I said. Right. The come out. On the road because There's an old campground on that road. I'm thinking yeah. of. Um, Potters. Potters. Yeah. No, no, no. Before again, it's it's south of Baker's Grant Road. If you come out Hebo Hibo, somewhere just a little bit this side oh, of it, where, there is a the left cemetery. Is? Cemetery. Is. Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Cemetery Road. Yeah. 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 Emily Acres or whatever. Yeah, the easiest way from 202 to get to the Hebo Hybo would be to go up 202, sure. bang a left, and then yeah. essentially that would be almost directly in front of you to keep yeah. going. Right. Again, that's completely circumstantial, but it right. seems to match a lot of the right. usage patterns. Um, um, but I think it would be interesting to see what the Lebanon folks are thinking, because mm -hmm. they're obviously in the same right. uh, situation. Uh, even though the road's in better condition, they still have got to, to deal with, if they do improve it, how are they going to be able to keep it from right. getting torn up? Um, so, But the concept of a through road, I find, is a real hard right. task at this point. I can't picture it. Yeah, right. So the thought of, do we need consensus between the two towns? Do we join forces? The short answer is, is yeah, you'd like to, but this is looking based <coughs> upon where the damage is to be a one side or the other kind of a scenario if you right. work your way to the middle. Right. I don't know. Right. And again, all the damage, technically speaking, is on private property outside of the town of Acton. Right. Property. Right. Hi, Virginia. Hi. Hi, Virginia. Um, yeah, folks, I mean, not everybody saw it, so but you got to take our word for it, I guess. I mean, um, or go and see it. I mean, that's the other thing is other members go and see it and see what you think um, of the situation. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine the amount of money you could dump in there right. trying to straighten that out. Um, and again, and that would be if you had consensus to do so. Right, right. Which would have to come from, right. generally speaking, the abutters, I would expect. Yeah. Um, so a, a meeting with Lebanon just to yeah it'd be interesting to see what they're thinking you know what are their thoughts I mean at one point we heard that they were thinking of bringing vehicles in as far as this community forest hmm. because that's where their trailheads would be and they figured that that would be enough hiking for people starting from there so um Maybe I'll see if we can, uh, a few of us can attend their next meeting and see what's going be, on. It would be interesting to see what they plan to do with their parcel. Yeah. And then, well, you know, if, if, you know if, if, if I was a shot walk, theoretically, from theirs, you know, and it's not, it's, yeah. but <laughs> how, much, how far is that? Three quarters of a mile? Map, three quarters of a, a mile or something like that? I was going to, it's over a half, yes. I told you, half. Sure. But it, 
still might be doable if I mean if we wanted yeah. to take a look at what the the exit but the road up to the town of Lebanon property is without question 10 times better than right. everything right. this side of the bridge on the town of Acton yeah. side yeah. it's yeah. been graveled up that far yeah. the large pit that's a half a mile or so past <laughs> the uh, old town of Lebanon dump yeah. property I'll call it has seen a lot of work from the pit that was on it and then that's the lot that was just this uh, Lebanon side of of Rogers property right second property the Hebo Hybo property I call it yeah yeah um, so yeah I don't think Lebanon has half the road access issues the town that Lebanon and Acton does well the stream isn't right next to the road either right so yeah. that makes a big difference all right well I'll check with uh, John see when their next meeting is Maybe a few of us could attend that, see what they're thinking. Okay. Let's see, moving on. Town Farm Road. While, while we're on Hebo, just yep. well, before we leave Hebo, yep. um, is there any sense in doing a little outreach uh, in terms of respondents that we got on our survey and trying to set something up for later in the summer, August or some damn thing? Or even September. Well, let's meet with Lebanon first, so we right. have those right. answers, and then we um, see what. Yeah. I mean, one suggestion that I've heard from somebody in town <coughs> was that sell he uh, sell Hebo Hybo and increase the size of Mary Grant. Sell. The town forest. Right. Yeah. Use that money to increase the size of the Mary Grant property. Yeah. I mean, considerably. With what? Well, Tom there's, knows the folks there. Yeah. There's a, uh, a couple that owns the uh, formerly Pat Johnson's house. As you're descending from Ann McEachern's heading downhill to Goose Pond Road. Okay. You're on, you're on San Pedro. Roughly, I know where you're talking about, but yeah. When you come up, there's a gully there. When you come up out of the gully, there's a big old uh, uh, two-story home quite close to the road. And uh, it's owned by, Pat Johnson is deceased, and it's owned by her uh, daughter currently. And they have been very, uh, uh, they, they called a meeting, I want to say three years ago now, maybe four, with... Um, Three Rivers and Madge and Jean and I met in their kitchen and talked about what they would like to do with it. And uh, there was, she's been a very strong uh, supporter of Three Rivers over the years um, with contributions. And uh, they have not, they have not been contacted probably for two years anyway, in terms of their long-term plan, but. They, there was discussion at that date of the meeting uh, that we one one meeting we've had with them of some kind of a donation and or easement on the forest land there. They wanted to uh, they wanted to carve out one lot with 109 frontage and uh, but this is all pipe dream stuff. Right well, now. how much? I guess stick macro for me just to draw me the picture. How large is the property, and what does that gain you versus what you would 30, lose to put this up? Thirty plus or minus in that neighborhood is what I recollect. Uh, beautiful. I think the I think the the part of it for us to think about as a committee. I mean, part of our goal is is recreation um, and recreational trails is part of it. I mean, that if Hebo Hybo isn't very accessible to most of the public, unless you have a access to something, I mean, it, it might be better to look closer to town where you could create more of a trail system that was readily available to the public. You get away that against the you get away that against the quality of that watershed, against that, that wetland. Uh, that I was just thinking that. more along the lines of if mm, I mean, obviously, I'm a forester, so I'm more tied to the larger woodland style thing than I would be a smaller section that has more recreational right. value. I'm, I'm the guy that is used to going out and looking for that kind of stuff. But obviously the trade-off would not just be for size, 
size of land, but you would probably lose a hell of a lot of traction on anything that you would, in fact, in the future, if you decide to do anything, plan to do on the Hebo Hybo Road if you got rid of that piece. Right. I'm just I throwing mean, it out there. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not. Yeah, I. You know, I just. My initial gut would be is that would <laughs> be going against an awful lot about what we're actually yes, trying uh, to yeah. promote, and I'm not sure if I would try to float that. Personally. I tend to I tend to be in agreement with that. I I think primary our primary process is to protect most right. critical habitat, which is that wetland. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and it's in a yeah. I I, I, I have a hard time <clears throat> swallowing yeah. that, but yeah. Right, I mean, it's hard because we aren't protecting it. It's getting no. trashed, you know, so it's kind of, right. you know, and it's, are we doing anything that's why to protect I raised, it? That's why I raised the question of yeah. what Lebanon's going to do with it, theirs, and that might make us reframe what we want to do with yeah. that law. So I think if we know, can if do something <coughs> there, I agree. Hypothetically, I totally agree. If, if, you you had a, if you had a national monument and you had an ecological <laughs> pristine thing, I, totally hypothetically and yeah. hyperbolating, and it was only a... a Ten feet from the Lebanon line, right, right. <laughs> and it was thirty miles from your town line. You'd still try to save it, you know. Yeah. It'd be a pill of great price, kind of a thing. But. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's we'll keep we'll keep chatting about it. <coughs> uh, moving on, town farm road management plan um, for folks that weren't at town meeting. The town meeting did vote to appropriate the three thousand dollars for the forest management plan or total plan package really and also that the any future cutting on that property could go into the the revenues could go into the forest reserve account so kudos um, next step is management plan. right the plan yep. is the management plan the way the process of that would work tends to be that I'll go out and do an inventory on the property, take a <coughs> of what I find is its assets, um, you know, calling anyone else, like, you know, for specialized information right. that may want to input into the plan, that's certainly welcome, and I'll adopt it right into it. Um, but just as specifically as to say, once I have what I call the what or the inventory of the plan, then there's the, the what do you do with it kind of a question, which is, now that I know what we have and what can be done and what's available to us, then you come back to the powers that be that I presume start with this committee and say, you know, here's what this acre could do or this acre might do, what should we do yeah. with it? <laughs> and then that guides the prescriptions of the different forest stands. So the inventory begets the descriptions of the forest stands, come back to the group, talk about it, and then come back and derive the prescriptions to do. That's where we'll have, hopefully, That's where there's public, back and forth and public Public talk. input. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully. Right. Um, what is your time frame, you think, on that, Steve? I mean, it'll, the inventory probably would be no issue to have, you know, certainly by early fall, you know, a couple of months from now. And uh, then just back again to, you know, start discussing things, you know, take a walk out there, bring in other information, whatever. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, if there's anyone that you know or, you know, a specialist or something like that that you want to put in touch with me so that I can take the inventory stuff and start to bring it together, you know, pass them along now, I guess. Yeah. Have you worked with uh, Kristen Pryor? Kristen Pryor, did I say your name right? Mm -mm. No. Do you know her, Whitney? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Do you know her? No. Huh. How about you? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> uh, she does, she's done work for the land trust, um, inventory work, more with critters and wetlands and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, she works. She, all the MNRC P projects that we do, she comes in and inventories the, the vernal pools and the... Okay different things like that, frogs and snakes and turtles and, yep. Um, I could certainly contact her and see if she would, uh, Be an independent or does she work for a government agency? I don't know. I don't think you ever pay or anything, so I'm not sure how she works. <laughs> well, that was my next question because if, if, I don't think you know, the more we bring into the plan that I can adopt directly, that's fine, but I don't know, 
I certainly didn't go into the writing of the plan or the asking of right. how much money for the plan. Yeah. Let me so find that to be like a big uh, right. specialist coming in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know we've never paid or anything, but I'm not sure if it has to do with the projects we're working on or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Out. I'll yep. find out what her story yeah. is. Because yeah. she did ask us recently if we have a project this year, and we don't because we're not putting in for another yep. MNRCP, so we don't yep. have nope. a project. Bring in the conversation and yeah. we'll hammer it out. Okay. Um, what were those initials for? And the, What's that? The, the initials you, you said, MNRCP, what is that? That is the... Um, for clarity. <laughs> natural resources. Source. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Program. It's a wetland mitigation we go. It took two of us. <laughs> uh, no, we, we, we say these things in public and yeah. somebody has to act like a fool and I don't know what that is. <laughs> Contractors pay into this fund when they destroy wetlands. Okay. And then that money is spent to conserve wetlands. And that's the program, MNRCP. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's run through the Nature Conservancy. Mm -hmm. We could maybe, on that line of thinking, we could maybe contact our um, mudders and see if they would like to make a six-figure contribution. <laughs> yes. Okay, Tom, I'll leave that in your hands. Yeah, see what you can do. <laughs> uh, okay, anything else on that uh, town farm parcel? Nope, not that I know of. Nothing new. Okay. All right. Um, new business. Uh, this is town forest parcels. We crossed out Romac on that and just, it, it would be town forest parcels, standard operating procedures. Carl, um, when I raised that, as a possible uh, agenda item, I was thinking uh, not so much that there would be a blanket policy statement, but we may have to actually look at the individual parcels awesome. because some of the uh, um, guidelines for mm -hmm. use uh, would differ because of neighbors, etc. Yep. Proximity of, of you know abutters. I thought you were going to fill this agenda, Roman. I, I just went to the. Uh, and farmland trust thing, and that was one of the things the guy there brought up. Is it Charlie? Charlie Baldwin? That he wondered out loud who it, how they were going to get Romac picked this fall. How they're going to get it picked? Yeah. Would you tell them they're looking for workers? No, I didn't. I just he just I didn't. I, you know. No. I just was curious myself. How are they going to get it picked? Yeah. To pick your own. Yeah, well, that's a pick your own and then have somebody pick higher up in the trees. Last year there was no market, so most of them that weren't picked hit the ground. This year we'll see what the crop is like. But last year there was just no market. Every orchard was loaded with fruit. Um, so well, looks like that's going to happen again this year too. But they did okay last year. I mean, it was, you know, I think it paid the bills and then some. So. That was year one out of, out of being out of business for five or six, so that's mm -hmm. not too bad. Yeah. And it's like any agricultural endeavor, it's it's weather driven. You get cork of weekends up there, why you're gonna get some folks. Um, so but no, they were optimistic. Both Will and, and David were definitely he I think he put in more peach trees this year. And I think he's going to do some other fruits eventually. I mean, he's only 19 years old. Mm -hmm. you know? He's, he's uh, thinking it through, and but he's making it happen. So, um, okay, getting back to uh, operating standards. Oh, well, you want to start with Goat Hill then? Um, I mean, that's the one that's going to see the most public use for sure. Right. Uh, no question. Yeah, I think it would be useful uh, if we had something in place prior to uh, someone coming in and asking the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. if they could have a, uh, you know, a, a uh, jamboree up there or whatever. Right. Um, uh, and it's a little more complicated maybe than some others would be in terms of drafting guidelines because of uh, the proximity of the orchard business right and uh, and it being a town parcel or town forest parcel as well 
although that really doesn't um, probably that wouldn't impinge too much on any guidelines that you'd come up with the fact that it's does anybody know the guidelines on the Mary Grant parcel they are written down All and right. I, I would hope they would be in a file that Jennifer would have I, I have not. Maybe we uh, should look at those and we could uh, kind of work from that what applied to yeah. Goat Hill and what doesn't apply and then yeah. see if there's other things we should consider there. Um, um, the, the other thing was uh, there are really three entities there. There's the um, town in the, in the form of town meeting that would be the governing body on this thing and we'd, whatever we come up with probably ought to uh, run through an acceptance process by town meeting, uh, just so it's codified. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if there's anything in Three Rivers arrangement. You, you thought there probably wasn't much in Three Rivers documents with uh, the town that would prescribe what no. would go on there, other than that, the fact that if they want to sell it, it has to. There's that only stipulation. Yes, yeah. okay. And that's with the grant. That's yeah. with the, yeah, with the, the federal grant that, that the town got for the top of the hill, there is a stipulation in that, that if the town wants to sell the top of the hill, because there is no easement on it, they can sell it, but they have to come up with something of equal value to the community, within the community, if they want to sell Go Hill. So. Um, oh, it's prescribed to be within the community? Yeah, it's got to be oh. within the town of Acton. Oh. They have to come up with something of equal value. That's safe. For the community. <laughs> What's that? That's a safe piece of... Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think it's, I don't think it's something that's probably going to happen, because you're not going to find something of equal value. But <clears throat> anyway, that, that is a stipulation with the, yeah. with the federal grant. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we uh, next meet and get a, we'll get a copy of the uh, Mary Grant. Okay. Um, procedures and uh, go through those and then look at uh, the town forest parcels and see what I mean they're all a little different because obviously you're not going to hunt probably much on Goat Hill or oh, I don't know it doesn't seem like a place to hunt really mm -hmm. but not that particular parcel with 25 acres but uh, the other parcels you certainly would um, so yeah I think it's parcel by parcel yeah yeah um, and I think you, it would be wise if we pulled in uh, uh, probably the Cody family. Anyway, I don't know if yep. the gentleman on the west slope there. Oh yeah, I know Alex. We could get Alex in here. Okay. Yep. Alex and Denise. Yep. Yep. Let's talk to Carl. Do you still have that sheet with the from the ninety four? Yes, yeah, right here. <laughs> through this real quickly? Sure. Uh, back in 1994, there was a uh, one of the uh, preceding uh, committees uh, that was involved with Town Forest Land. This is from a 94 town meeting in March uh, 11th. Um, and this particular uh, document or, or bit of ordinance work dealt with at the time it was called the Acton Conservation and Recreation Committee and amongst their duties that were spelled out to town meeting in the uh, in the acceptance of this was um, committees and advisory committee to the Board of Selectmen that is no longer well I guess it is but just it, it has to be understood that it's not a appointed committee by the board, it is morphed into a uh, uh, a committee that is elected from town meeting floor. So that gives it a little more rigor in terms of uh, it has to be answerable to town meeting, obviously, in whatever way it was. Uh, second one was the committee oversees the use and management of all public lands and forests in the town of Acton, which kind of gives us our um, uh, statement of 
duties that encompasses town forest. The third one is the committee is to work with planning board and conduct research into lands within the town of Acton. I think we're probably doing that already. Uh, the committee, f fourth item, the committee is to maintain an index to include open lands, marshlands, swamps, and other wetlands and obtain information relating to the proper protection and development of these areas. Uh, and on that, I think we'd, we might defer largely to the uh, um, beginning with habitat and also the, the field work that has been done um, by Three Rivers there. They would have some um, studies that would pertain to that. Um, fifth item, the committee is to make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen for management, protection, and development of these areas. Uh, six, the committee is to work to develop recreational areas within the town to include swimming, nature trails, and recreational areas. The committee is to work with local landowners to receive easements for use of their land for conservation and recreational purposes now and in the future. The committee shall make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen for the purchase or lease of conservation, lease is the wrong word there, but of conservation and recreational land areas. And lastly, the committee may perform other duties as assigned to it by the vote of the Board of Selectmen. So there's plenty of uh, uh, corroboration within this town meeting's work of what, what would we redraft a, a, a list of duties and or guidelines for what we're supposed to be doing. I do, I, my thinking was before we get burdened with any more parcels, uh, we ought to start kind of making the town and the Board of Selectmen and ourselves more aware of uh, uh, these issues of procedures and guidelines for use. But we have Everybody have a copy of that? You want me to get Does your copy? Like I'd, I'd probably do, but... Why don't we get a copy of that for everybody, Tom? Okay. Yeah, because it's... I've certainly looked at it a few times. <laughs> I, I thought early on I put together... Because we had to form a, a letter for Brad Morin, and I had a packet, I thought, for everybody that included um, previous enabling legislation by town meeting that up to the present that gave form to the Forestry Committee. Been through several uh, more things. F yeah, four or yeah, five yeah, morphs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got a list of um, legislation I'll, I'll, in the town I'll make relative a, to that. So. I'll make some fresh copies of this of the whole packet, I guess, for you. Yeah. Um, other business. Uh, Do you want to? Something just occurred to me. It's kind of backtracking more to the Hebo Hibo question and lot. But with the voted town meeting for the flat ground road that we were talking about that got voted through to have the town improve the road up yeah. to the certain point and all that, um, I wouldn't be above talking or asking the powers that be, which would be the lawyer or the selectman in this case, is the same person that gave us our recommendation for the status of the Hebo Hybrid Road the same person who yeah. gave the recommendation of what the status of the flat ground road is, I presume? Yeah, Tom, you can add to that a little bit. You talked to David, remember? David said they're two different. Because I, I yeah, I had asked, the reason I asked that question is I saw it as a slippery slope and a parallel between the two roads that I thought were of the same status. As the vote was going on while things were being deliberated on the town floor on Saturday, I went over and I asked David Winchell, I said, is there a difference between one road and the other? And his answer was that his understanding was that flat ground road had not been deeded back to the center line and not only on the Hebo Hybo road, we had only retained an easement. It was deeded back to the center line, but flat ground road was kept its footprint and owned in fee. 
So if that's the case, then its status was different, and therefore that was primarily why I'm guessing the recommendations were to put money into the road to help improve it to the last house on the road or whatever it got voted to be improved to. Because, again, that's the whole camp road, not camp road, private road, public road argument. Mm -hmm. And I just wouldn't be above hearing it that, in fact, the roads, in fact, the status was different for both roads. Because it'd be a drastically slippery slope that the town just started down. Well, there is state law, too, saying that municipalities can now maintain... I mean, whatever you're calling yep. it, a private road or a right of way, yep. if it's for water quality improvement. Purposes. Right, and that's and that was another one of the articles that mm -hmm. we had within the warrant as well. Which does different than flat have ground fall right. under that as right. well. So. so I would be kind of curious in knowing if that has set some level of precedence for what we're dealing with out there. Mm -hmm. I frankly was puzzled. By that whole Warren article, I, I thought the flat ground one. Yeah, that right. Well, again, what David Winchell said when I asked him was that flat ground roads footprint was kept in fee owned by the town, and therefore it was elected not to be discon. I'm going to start messing up the verbiage here again, but what not to be discontinued, but to have its maintenance stopped, or it was somehow just the maintenance was dropped. And therefore, the part of the reason as to why it was voted fair, I'll use that term, I guess, to go back and refurbish it was because it's still owned in fee by the town and therefore should be kept up by the town. That would, in fact, be different than the Hebo Hybrid Road if it was obviously deeded to the center line back to all of its abutters. Right. Which is what? It but I would like to make sure that that's actually the case, that those, the status is different, because that's a... Well, That's a very heavy line of demarcation of can you, can't you, should you, shouldn't you do things with that road. We're on what I, th <clears throat> I mean, I, I, uh, I tried very hard to uh, make sure that we had, um, there was clarity on, on those issues pertaining right. to uh, Hebo, Hybo because I didn't want to be halfway down the, uh, through the process of uh, improving that and outreach to abutters, et cetera, et cetera, um, and then find out that the town, uh, in fact, does not have an easement there. Well, well, that's what I'm getting at is it's, I would be a little more comforted by knowing that, in fact, it was the same lawyer that came by both decisions, meaning he understands that, in fact, those two roads are of different status. Yeah. Well, if it was two different lawyers, I would have to ask the question of, is one giving a different opinion than the other? If it's the same lawyer, then he presumably knows that the two roads are of different status. I'm sure you could find out right in the town office. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it, I've got the warrant. Yeah, I don't know if I can find it in a hurry. Well, it wouldn't be within the warrant article. Again, it would be in the legal opinion that derived that article. I don't want to go near that issue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> That's why I kept my mouth shut at town meeting. Um. Again, it's not its not that I'm saying that that should change whether we do or don't do something out there at this point. It, it's just... We should be clear on... The status of that road is yeah. primary to what you have authority to do back there, let alone... Well, we found out it's been it's discontinued. Right. right. But again, I, I just presume the flat ground was the same way. It might not be. Yeah. And presumably is not. Right. Right. Again, it's just because there, the comment was made, mm -hmm. perhaps erroneously on the town meeting floor, that it was subject to gates and bars, which led me to believe that it was of the same status as the Hebo Hybo, but would not be if it was kept in feet. You could not have gates and bars on a road that was owned in fee. I'm left to understand that those two are not correlating. Um, how that was conducted, I, I just uh, didn't, didn't understand, and it seems like somebody, uh, the 
board of selectmen maybe we're just uh, I mean I can look into that if you want it, it's it's more for my own yeah I would yeah. say of mine yeah. I would say look into it and yeah okay yeah so would you like me to do that then personally sure. okay yep yep okay any other thoughts How's everybody's garden doing? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Reasonable? If it rained uh, three or more times this week, it would be better. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty dry. It's pretty dry. So on the dry. agenda for next, for July, is is a maybe traveling over to uh, Lebanon and talking with those guys? Or would that be a separate meeting? That'll be a separate thing, okay. I think. I don't know. Or you want to make that our July outing? Do you know when some outings in July. Do you know when their meetings yeah. are? Usually. <laughs> yeah. Let me check with John, see when they meet next. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Maybe they'll even throw a picnic for us or something, you know? So our next meeting would be July 17th. Our next meeting? Okay, John Bozak. Lebanon meeting. So you're going to call John? Yep. I'll give him a call. Yep. Yeah, because their agenda will, now that they have this community forest, they're going to be moving ahead, I would think, with ideas and thoughts. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get one, uh, a letter from... Acton or one or two, maybe if we could get Roger to come in, and or um, what's the uh, Mr. Grant, what's his? Mr. Who? Mr. Grant, what's his first? Terry. Name? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought he was a a supporter from your survey letters. Terry. Is he? Really? Mm -hmm. I know it surprised me. I don't remember that, but I can look right here, Thomas. <coughs> the other folks I was thinking of, that, although you didn't get any response from them, was uh, uh, the Smith family. Oh, well, no, we did get a response from Peter. And they were concerned about access, nothing else. I'm just thinking of two or three individuals that are about us that might contribute to our thinking. Um, I, maybe it has to do with the season, but I was surprised that we didn't get more uh, comments in our survey pertaining to the abuse and uh, with the hopes that we might be able to do something positive out there. Uh, I'll be a part of something positive. Right now, all we all we can do out there is cheerlead. I don't know. I don't even see one from Terry. Maybe I'm not remembering that correctly, Carl. <laughs> You're saying ask Roger if he'd like to go to the joint meeting. Yeah, yeah, just to have yep. one representative. It would be nice to have two that were like mine or had similar issues. Okay. Did they did they uh, trespass on any of uh, Roger's woodlot? Well, that was pretty much out of the they did. Yep. Well, I mean, his woods road had a landing right smack in the middle of the property that widened to about 100 feet wide, right about where the brook was. My point being... Was it in Lebanon or Acton? Acton. 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 So having said that, I can't tell you where the abuse was, but access was pretty much wide open at that point. Right. Well, did the trucks... <laughs> Let me understand. Did the trucks make what was a one-lane road into a 100-yard... Bath? What? What? What do you the mean? The logging truck started it, 
and the four wheeling expanded on finished the concept. It. Okay. Meaning in the middle of the Three Rivers Land Trust property there's a hundred foot wide landing with burn piles. Yeah. Land, uh, you know, four wheeler roads going off in all different directions, following skid trails. You know that kind of thing. So. And Rogers property. Yeah, when we went out and turned around. At you the said Burn Three Park. Rivers property. Well, I meant the Ease property. Sorry. Okay, the Ease property. I got you. Right. I got you. Yeah. I I recollect that um, the Acton Group, um, and this came from a talk with uh, George one time in a meeting. I don't remember George Maine that is that they actually confronted, uh, as a conservation committee, the, uh, the mudding, uh, the fellow that is the owner of the Lebanon facility of a mud bath or whatever the hell it is. I forget. They have a little name for it over that way. Um, and I don't know what came of it. But, who, uh, who contacted him? The Lebanon Conservation Group. Oh, yeah. Um, and they were trying to... If I recollect, they were trying to find some kind of a a handle to um, reach out to them, I guess. I don't know, and try to do a little education and/or enforcement pertaining to trashing wetlands or something. Um, but I don't know what came of it. I I I don't think we might hear much. about that at their meeting. Yeah. Right. Toward that end, too, Carl, the um, the Acton property that I'll be dealing with over there on the other side, the Dias property that I've been mentioning yes. about walking yep. you on, got a call from that a couple of weeks ago and was told that, and I don't know the man's name or the exact organization, but a president of the local four-wheelers club had talked to them, the Dias family, because the entrance to the old school at the La Valley Gate on that road over there, which is exactly where his property corner is for the slot that I'm dealing with, is right at the gate. There's the gate and the property line with a wall right adjacent to it, right next to it. They've started going around that La Valley gate, crossing over just on, you know, 15 feet into this fellow's lot, and then jumping the stone wall back onto the La Valley um, road network over there. And they were asking him about, you know, building an abutment of some sort to try to keep you know, the gate access stoppage extending a little wider than the gate itself. But I didn't know if you had ever, ever had any contact with, or Lebanon, if you would know what organization that would be. I mean, again, the, this is through three people, but the landowner claimed, you know, president of the Southern Maine four-wheelers, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I made very sure that, you know, he should be making contact with me because he wanted to give that fellow my name as I'll be working on that woodlot this summer. But while on a lot of the Hebo Hibo stuff, we're talking of actual four wheel drive trucks and side by sides and stuff, this sounded more like ATVs. an organized, an organized four wheeler, mm -hmm. you know, group. Mm -hmm. And that would be someone right. if he is extending a hand out to neighboring landowners to control access, would very much be that person we want to talk to yeah. on the four wheeler side of things, right. and should have knowledge of his brethren. Who I'm thinking. All right. hmm. See if you can get so a name. I'll see if I can come by a name yeah, in the, the organization. organization. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there is a group that the Sanford folks were working with with their issues on the Nazan Way trails, right? Yes. Yeah. Lee is heading that up, I think. I went to a meeting where Lee was kind of moderating. <coughs> he had a whole parcel of uh, uh, generally ATV. I didn't see the mutters uh, represented. It was primarily ATV and maybe some snowmobile. Uh, there's a lot of crossover there, but um, and what he was trying to do at that time was engage these guys because the cudgel he was holding over the head was you may not if you continue trashing these properties, you may not gain access to the railroad trail mm -hmm. because the town of Sanford owns that owns rail bed and they can indeed you know prohibit you from utilizing. It. So I don't know. How that's, um, I haven't heard Lee speak yeah, of that. Yeah, I haven't that. heard how that's played out. Yeah. But actually, he brought this whole issue to <laughs> to the dining room table, so to speak. And uh, we've been munching on it ever since. 
So it might be good to just update with him how, how his right. uh, group are faring with this whole issue of um, uh, the destruction of, of trails versus uh, the education of those um, individuals that may be involved in the uh, downgrading of the quality of the trail. Okay, anything else? At least you're over the notes. Oh, I'm always making notes. What's that? If I write it down, I remember better. That's it's really one nice. of those. Yeah, you know, I wish I could if you type it, notes. you don't remember it as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good skill to have. Yeah. I've done yeah. it for. Well, obviously you have. <laughs> it's a good skill. You did a good job, too. Motion to adjourn. I'm not going to show my notes. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it.